Hello and welcome to the Gaming Chronicles. Today we will begin King's Quest, or as it was later called, King's Quest, Quest for the Crown. It was first released in 1984, and we will be playing the re-release of 1987, which I believe is the more commonly known uh, version or release of it, uh, because the 1987 re-release included this uh, lovely manual with a backstory that enriched the history or the lore of the game, which I believe the 1984 original release did not have. So, uh, let's fire it up. Okay. And I believe that there is no opening scene, it's just credits. Yes, that appears to be so. Okay. So, we uh, let's be on our way on this adventure. And I was introduced to this game by my cousin and uh, his dad, my uncle, and I can't remember exactly. Let's go into the castle. Ah, before I get into the my own history of how I was into this the game, I want to comment on that that noise. That sound, that uh, fanfare, that uh, that sounds when you open the doors of the castle. I distinctly really remember that filling me with a sense of excitement. That oh man, I am about to embark on a co uh, exciting adventure. This I am playing King's Quest. This is going to be awesome. Uh, little did I know what I was in for. All right, let's bow for bow to the king. And now let's talk to him. Okay, and I believe, as previously mentioned, that this is all that you really had to go off of from the 1984 release version. I could be wrong. However, if you didn't have the manual, like me, I was just given the disc. My, my cousin or my uncle had uh, given me the just the Sierra copies of the game without the manuals. I don't know if they ever had the manuals or what, but the, the, they were the official Sierra discs, so they weren't pirated copies. And so, never know what happened to the manuals, if they ever had them. But anyway, uh, this is where you find out that you have to get the, the mirror, the shield, and the chest. And <laughs> my very first time playing it, when I talked to the king, I uh, I just mashed uh, enter or space bar real quick and I didn't read the whole thing. And so and, and I was so excited that I didn't really pay attention or notice that or, or think to myself, you know, that might have been an important thing to pay attention to. And you can't go back and talk to the king and ask him to repeat himself. Uh, that is a one time thing. And so you are on your own now uh, unless you had maybe the manual or maybe uh, a kind friend or family member that uh, would help you through the game fortunately my my cousin i had seen him play uh the first four king's quest games uh, prior to me playing any of them and i i kind of knew what i had to do kind of not really though <laughs> because when i started playing i i figured for uh, a few things out early like okay you need to look under things and around things, like right here. You have to move the rock, okay? If um, because things are hidden. Okay, sweet. I moved the rock. And now, uh, what's on that hole? You know. And okay, so get the dagger. And this this was exciting stuff. Uh, finding things, uh, getting your score up, getting uh, getting those points. That was exciting to see that score go up. Let me tell you. Uh, now, one thing that I also remember is uh, dying to this uh, silly rock because it wasn't the first time, but it was maybe within the first handful of times that I played the game. I pushed the rock when I was on the downhill side of it. And yes, in early Sierra online games, uh, down or the bottom of the screen uh, could typically mean downhill, 
top of the screen uphill. And so I pushed the rock uh, when I was on the wrong uh, side of it, and it flattened me. Uh, and I learned quickly that uh, Sierra Online games were very punishing and could kill you in many, many ways. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this tree, this tree always has always made me nervous because there's just this big golden egg up here, unguarded. I mean, you look at the tree, it's a rather large nest. Okay, uh, look, nest. Yes, there is a golden egg. Uh, look at the egg, it's smooth and shiny. The, and to this, to this day, I, when I pick up the egg, I am afraid that there's this giant bird going to come up and snatch me away, claw me to death, peck my face off, whatever, uh, because it just seems odd that Sierra Online would give you a freebie like that. Well, it just feels like one. Anyway, moving on. Okay, here is our field of carrots. Oh, that's right. Let's look ground. That's an example of how, in this very first King's Quest, you learn very quickly that you have to be kind of exact, or very exact in some cases, in the commands that you give. Um, and, and this carrot field is kind of fun, because you can pick up a carrot, eat it, pick up a carrot, eat it, for as long as you want, I think. I'm not sure if it makes you sick, but I think I've I picked in, I think like eight, eight, like five carrots or something. And I think I was fine. <laughs> okay, let's continue to go this way. And uh, let me think for a second. Uh, do we want to go straight to the goat? Ah, heck, why not? Let's just go straight to the goat. And I have decided that I will be playing this game on normal speed. Uh, just simply because... Walking on the fast speed is it's fine for for traveling like from one screen to the other like this uh, however, I I wouldn't want it to try and get the goat just because of the fact that He can get out of the corral here and wander away and and then you you, you don't have him uh, so let's go ahead and Close the gate so he doesn't get out Okay all right, we need to go get this goat. And and, and I, th I think that there are a, f a couple of funny interactions. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, the goat refuses, the goats are stubborn. Um, ride goat, you know. I think this is another one. <laughs> um, pet goat. Okay, yeah, so... Uh, very stereotypical, uh, you know, goat personality, goat, um, not personality, but a disposition of being, you know, a cranky and grouchy and ornery and just, just, well, you know, kind of leave me alone, don't touch me. So, uh, we want to tempt, oops, not, whoa, come on, spelling, tempt goat with carrot. Don't understand tempt. Uh, lure? I need to remember what the command is. I don't want to give the goat to the carrot. Or, whoa, give the carrot to the goat. Because then I'll just eat it and I'll have to go back and get another one. So... Uh, dangle... Carrot and this is probably too complicated for this game. Dang it! Uh, <laughs> uh, show carrot to yeah, and that's the thing is uh, you have to be kind of uh, simple as well. You have to be simple yet exact. There we go. That's what we need. That's what we want. Okay, let's open that gate. And if I remember correctly, I believe that uh, the goat, well, my, my, I think 
was my cousin who told me this, the goat only stays with you for a certain amount of time. He'll hang out with you for a while. It's not like it's a very short amount of time that um, he'll hang out with you, but he definitely has his limits. Okay, let's get that pouch. Now let's open it. And we have diamonds. And I didn't learn about these diamonds. I just thought that these diamonds were for giving you points. And and while they and while they are, um I found out uh, years after I had played the game and beat the game several times that the the diamonds were a uh, a means of uh paying the troll that we will encounter up here in a second if you didn't have the goat and i i just thought huh well uh that's interesting because i thought that the goat was the only way that you can get across the bridge um i remember the very first time i encountered this troll here that we will see and there are and there are three trolls because there's three bridges which i can later illustrate but anyway i remember the first way that i tried to uh, solve this problem here was throw the dagger at it i thought oh i have a dagger let me uh throw the dagger or or stab the troll and when i saw that neither of those worked i i eventually just ran across the goat because he was close to the troll bridge um and then I think I found, oh, I, I found the carrot, but I didn't know what it was for. And then I figured that, oh, I need to use the goat to get rid of the troll because I started to make the connection that King's Quest gives these little, you know, nods to fairy tales and folklore and stuff like that. And this is, of course, a nod to the Billy Goat's Gruff. So uh, let's move on. See, goats hate trolls. And we will let the goat just toss that troll right off the bridge into oblivion. Well, into the river, which is the same thing. Thank goat. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Now we can access this center little island here that uh, this raging river surrounds to talk to this gnome, who is very important. Okay, talk to the gnome. He tells you he has something that may be very useful to you. Guess his name in three guesses. And so, Rumpelstiltskin, of course. Okay, so let's look, let's go ahead and save here. Uh, save uh, at Rumple. We'll just say, let's we'll just call it Rumble. Now, this puzzle was very difficult uh, to figure out uh, way back then. Uh, if you had, I don't even know if the hint book included it. I don't even remember if King's Quest 1 had a hint book. Anyway, my cousin was the one who figured this one out. And he figured out many of the, the puzzles and the, and, the, and the problems and the, uh, and how to, and how to, do things in the King's Quest games. He was very good at uh, like adventure games and puzzle games and stuff in general. So he figured out a lot of these things. Uh, so anyway, we, we figured out that it was Rumpelstiltskin. However, if you say Rumpelstiltskin, he just tells you that is very close but not right. So what on earth could it be if it's not Rumpelstiltskin itself? Well, later on, um, when you find a note that gives you a clue that is very vague and, of course, you don't know what the clue is about, you have to connect this very vague clue to this particular puzzle and then you figure out that his name is um, spelled with an inverted or reversed alphabet. However, uh, you can't just, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's not as it seems, because his name, spelled with an inverted alphabet, is, oh, I need to look at my, my notebook, because I had to write this out, um, so that I would be prepared, because this takes forever to just figure it out on the fly. 
um, I F N K V O H G R O G H P R the M. Yeah, my writing is awful. Okay, so if you so this is his name spelled correctly with an inverted or reversed alphabet, but it's not right. So somehow you have to figure out, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and just restore, just because I think that you have to get it on the first guess to get maximum points. So we'll restore. You actually have to misspell it. The 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 video game is coded. R U M P L E, then then the rest is spelled correctly. This is how they code the name, and then they line that up with the reversed alphabet. So, the correct guess is I F N K uh, K O V H G R O G uh, H P R M, and I always forget that last H. And then you get it right. So that was virtually impossible to figure out. Just so many layers of difficulty, especially with one that that last small layer of difficulty being because they just misspelled the name. And and of course we didn't have Google. You couldn't just Google how do you spell Rumpelstiltskin. You had to have a book that had that tell in it, that had the story in it of Rumpelstiltskin. Otherwise, you just had to guess. And whoever was coding the, uh, the game at the time of creation obviously didn't have a book with rumpled silkskin in it because it was spelled wrong. Okay, so we got the beans. Uh, and, and if you don't get the name, of course, uh, he gives you a key instead of a instead of the beans and you just get less points. But that but that was the thing is to get less points was considered um, you know, you, you were considered a less skilled player in adventure video games. Okay, I need to think here for a second. Where do I want to go next? Because I can go get the... I could go straight to... I could technically just go straight to uh, the uh, Land of the Giants. Or the Land of the Clouds. Since it's just right, literally right here. In fact, I think yeah, we're just going to do that because we don't need anything special. Um, to go there. Let's see. Although, I think there are a few items that are close by. Let's, let's go to the Southern Bridge. I think there are a few items close by that, um, that I want to get before we go up there so I, I guess we'll make our way there in a roundabout manner yeah we'll just kind of we'll make a big circle since the map wraps um, let's see we ooh. is there a I don't know if there's a a bit uh, Villain, bad guy, a baddie. I don't know if there's one here. I can't remember if there's the dwarf in this screen or if this is a save screen. Seems to be safe because I've been walking through it for a minute. Okay, where is the screen with... Ah, there we go. We need to get some pebbles from the river. And I remember this being a particularly uh, a frustrating uh, thing to find. Just because you couldn't say, look ground, look sand or look uh, bank you had to say uh, look river and and then you can't just say get pebble you have to say pebbles <laughs> so uh, it's a little bit of a troll okay let's go straight down here and I believe there is an item in this next yes the bowl Okay, let's get that bowl. Okay. And we will use that much later. I 
And then I think, oh, I think we can just go, is it straight down this way? Yes, okay. We need to come straight down here. Hope the RNG is on our favor. I guess we can come down and take a drink of water while we're waiting for the little, the little elf that, that shows up here. <laughs> uh, I think you can take a drink of water in most every almost every body of water. I think except the that river that rapid uh the river with rapids that has the bridges and then the moat. Ah, there we go. Let's look at the elf. We would need to inspect him. Make sure he's not shady. He looks very friendly. Okay, talk elf. He is so impressed by my friendliness, he gives me a magic ring. Man, Sir Graham must have the greatest charm in the world to get somebody just to give him a magic ring. Okay. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it. Okay, let's continue on this way. And... Ah... Look around. Finest walnuts. Those null walnuts are enormous. Now, I'm sure that they made them that size just to, to illustrate that they're big, you know, that they're large tree nuts and that, uh... Let's open it. We're kind of hungry. Oh my goodness. Pure gold. Uh, now, I think that... Let's look at our inventory. So, I think that either the gold walnut the pouch of diamonds or even the gold egg can be paid to the troll or maybe it's just the diamonds i i truly don't remember but i think the troll if you don't use the goat you can just use any treasure to pay him off and this is a dangerous screen oh crap let's Okay, let's just swim across the lake. I don't want to deal with... Um, Batty RNG today. And he always appears behind that tree, too. So if you make it past the tree, you can kind of walk... Uh, Outwalk him. <laughs> because Graham, uh, for being the most brave and gallant knight and whatever, uh, cannot run or outrun any enemy in the game or out fight anybody i mean you have an ogre you have a wolf uh let's save our game here uh let's see uh, which uh, ogre wolf uh which sorcerer trolls uh and then uh, some more dangerous stuff like a dragon a giant leprechauns i mean what kind of knights does this kingdom train? Okay, let's, let's get to it. Okay, we need to eat the house. And which is home? So... Okay, we need to... Okay, there we go. Alright, we need to get a few things in here. Cup board. That cheese. Whoa. I don't think we need to interact with the stove. A little shady that there's a jail cell. Oh. Oh, yeah, uh, yep, you can. It's me. Best I get it. Be yeah, I guess I better come hide. Since I blend them with the carpet. Uh, this is it, right? Yeah, get the note. Okay, so here it is. Here is the note. The clue that players are supposed to be able to figure out. And when, when I got this and read this for the first time, I, I don't think I... I, I I knew anything about it. Um, I when when I asked my cousin about it, he was you know my <coughs> excuse me, he was my oh 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 
There's the witch. <laughs> okay, so you th you think that she smells me in the house, right? She knows I'm here. So she's going to get her oven ready. And by the way, if you look at the oven, if you, if you like go in and say, look at oven, it's already been burning for hours. So the oven's already ready. So instead of checking the oven, wouldn't it have made sense to go start checking the house? Since she could smell me however far away. Plot hole. Okay, anyway. We're not going to waste any time getting rid of her. And the witch is gone. So anyway, going back to the note. It was uh, it was very difficult to decipher what what I had to do with, and uh, I believe my cousin you know he figured out uh, that it had to do with the the Rumble Silskin puzzle and he he put everything together and, and I had no clue. Um, okay, I think if we just go this way and then I have to go. I think up. Anyway, he figured it all out, and okay. Oh, look at the flowers! Look, flowers. <coughs> and I remember uh, this. So this one, I actually figured out. Um, I, I looked uh, at the uh, spot of ground and I thought, wow, those flowers are sure growing big. Uh, and we have this plot of ground. And I bet if we plant the beans. A beanstalk will grow, <laughs> of course. Okay, climb beanstalk. Uh, anyway, so those are just insights into... Oh, crud. Yeah, we're going to be... Okay. Beanstalk. So, those... Oh. Climb the beanstalk. Okay. So anyway, that that's just how you you figured things out uh, when what's the path? There we go. Uh, and, and that's and that's kind of the 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 way that uh, with a dizzy wrong moves. Oh crap. That, that's the way you had to think through things. And at least that's the way I thought through things. Um, uh, when I, you know, figured this one out, I have no idea how the brilliant mind of my cousin worked when he figured these things out. Uh, okay, da da da. And I don't remember <laughs> what the trick is. And as you can see, very important to save often. Okay, save beanstalk. Again. Died many, many, many times this beanstalk. And to this day I still don't think I know what the what what the trick is to, to pay attention to. If it's like do my feet and hands have to be all touching the beanstalk at the same time because it seems like uh oops. Uh, no, I wanna save here. Yes. I think that it. Oh man, this is nerve wracking. Okay. No! Really? <laughs> Doing so well. Okay, let's save that. Yes, dozens of deaths. 
are at uh, are attributed or are credited to the beanstalk. All right, we made it. And so in our little uh, nod here to uh, Jack and the Beanstalk, we have a few choices. Let's let's uh, speed up our our walking speed. Actually, uh, we don't want to go to the giant screen just yet. We want to come over here. Look, uh, I think it's just the coal. Yeah, get the sling. And anyway, so we have three choices. And I didn't even know that there were three choices until... Is it three choices? Or do you even have... Or do you have four, maybe? Um, three? You can turn invisible with the ring. But then you lose points because the ring disappears after you've used it. You can use the sling and the pebbles to slay the giant. And you, I think, lose points because you've used violent methods to uh, obtain the chest. And then there's this third option, which is... Uh, ooh, it's always slightly scary. Not too much now that uh, I, I know what the trick is. But you just come up here and you hide behind this tree and the giant cannot reach you. And it takes a minute, but then you just wait for him to fall asleep, and then you just grab the chest and be on your merry way. And some of these uh, these objectives or these puzzles that you have to figure out in King's Quest would sometimes irk me when I was playing that solving them with non-violent methods was the way that would give you more points especially in king's quest 3 but we'll talk about that when we when we get to that game okay you can uh you can fall asleep at any time oh and i guess uh the backstory to the chest is uh in in the manual uh that uh, was part of the 1987 re-release Oh, what luck. Yeah. Um, carrying a huge chest around like that would make you tired. I don't care if you're a giant or not. Oh, he snores like a baby. And... So the backstory of the, je the chest is... Uh, the chest was the last magical item that the king had. And uh, King Edward was lonely and sad, so his wife had died. And... <clears throat> Excuse me, he'd already lost the mirror, he'd lost the shield, and he only had the uh, this chest left, which is what provided his kingdom with unending riches. However, he uh, was presented or met a young maiden who, you know, made him feel young again, blah, 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 fell in love with this young maiden, who, of course, was disguised as a witch and on their wedding night stole the chest away and now we're stealing it back but i don't know where the you know and i don't know where the giant fits in uh to that little part of the lore because we ain't we meet the witch so at least it seems like that uh, that would be the witch that would have tricked the king anyway uh Okay, now, let me think for a second. We've got the, we've got the chest. We've got the magic chest. Uh, hooray. We've got one of our objectives. Now, I think we need to go this way. Oopsies. Let's go get the mirror. I think we need to go down this way. Yes, because it's near the old, the old oak tree. Oh, but we need to be careful of that screen because that 
believe is the wolf. Okay, we won't let him catch us, I promise. We'll just come down to this nice little mountain lake. Let's look at the clouds. Oh, really? I don't see any shapes? That's disappointing. A serene mountain lake. Let's have another drink. We are thirsty from climbing all those stairs, and it's probably a hot, sunny day since it's been the same weather the entire time we've been walking around. This is one of those games where if uh, someone had put it to real time, Let's see, is it this way? No, it is not. It is up this way. Yes, there's the whale. Uh, it makes me wonder, how long would this have really taken Sir Graham? Uh, I mean, if, even if the kingdom of Daventry was small, I mean, how long would it have taken? Okay, do I... Uh, let's see. Look bucket. Look inside bucket. Ah. Okay. I know we need to have water in it. Okay, let's uh, let's save here, cause well, okay, lower bucket. Do we have to use the rope? A uh, fill bucket. Okay, uh, raise bucket. And I have to get it. I have to, I have to have it to, I can't, okay. Can't even untie a rope. Uh, but I can cut the rope with my dagger. It's like the only thing my dagger's really useful for in this game. Okay, look inside bucket. Oh, can I... Do I have water or not? Hmm. I am not filled with confidence. I know I need to go down into the well. Oh, I think... Uh, I think I have to fill the bucket once I am in the water. Right? Yes, fill bucket. Okay. So weird. Like that that one that one I remember I figured out, but it wasn't easy. Uh that one I did not need to help my cousin. Uh, it, uh these these King's Quest games, as I'm chronicling them, will make mention of uh my cousin many times. Okay, and I don't think I need anything else in here. Oh okay, there we go. Okay, uh, let's save dragon, dragons, oops, dragon's cave. Oh, wait, Philistine is coming on. Okay, goodness, glad that's over. Okay, uh, save dragon's cave. And I can't remember how close I have to get. But I have to throw the water on the dragon. It's kind of cliche and silly, but it works. Haha. <laughs> Alright, see you later, buddy. And of course, this mirror. This mirror was stolen by a source by a sorcerer or maybe the sorcerer um, that you encounter in the game. But either way, the, the mirror is stolen because the king wants an heir. And this sorcerer... Oh wait, we do not want to follow the dragon. We actually want to come and we go back the way we came, which gives us more points. That one I... Don't think I figured out until a long time after I started playing this. And I'd beaten it several times before 
uh, I saw that, uh, oh, I'm a few points short here. How do I, uh, how do I get those extra points? Because when you first climb down the rope and you're treading water, you, you're at the point of no return at that, at that moment. Uh, you, if I remember correctly, you can't climb back up until you've gone down, defeated the dragon. Uh, okay, so we've got the mirror. Uh, and, and so it's it's kind of just something you have to figure it out. It's like, oh, after I defeat the dragon, then I can climb back up. Uh, but who thinks of that? Well, uh, I did, but only after many years. <laughs> it uh, wasn't something that came to me quickly or intuitively. Okay, I think that... Uh, so, uh, is it this way? Okay, we need to find the we need to find the cat the woodcutter's cabin. Uh, because, oh wait 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 no we need we need we need we need um wait we can get the clover um later. Not we don't need it right now. But okay, this is not. This is not where we want to go. Okay. Uh, maybe we have to go down still. But anyway, uh, my my point with uh with with what I had just said was uh, you could you know beat this game many many times uh, and not have a perfect score and and having that perfect score you know 158 158 was a big deal and that was like a you know huge bragging rights. Like, hey, I know how to get all 158 points of King's Quest. That was a uh, big deal. Anyway, uh, hello. Well, can't take the fiddle. I've tried doing that before. So, let's talk to the man. Very, uh... Okay, uh, man of little words and, uh, don't have anything to eat. That's fine, that's fine. So, let's look at our bowl. Curiously, there is a word in the bottom of it. And, let's see, set bowl on table. Uh, put bowl on table. Now, why would I put an empty bowl on a table? Fill. Magic. And <clears throat> this is another one of those uh, little uh, puzzles that when you, when you solve it, you get more points. Because when the couple sees you, uh, fill, filling the bowl, uh, or, or uttering the word fill, they understand that, oh, this is a never-ending bowl of stew, and all we have to do is say the word fill, and we will always have to eat. Now, if you fill the bowl before you give it to them, then it says something like, they're grateful that they'll have one last meal, and you don't get as many points. So... It uh, follows the age-old saying, uh, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, Give or teach a man a fish and you will feed him his whole life. Okay, uh, we've got the fiddle. Now we need to go find the clover. And crap, I don't even know where it is from here. Well, let's just wander. Have a nice little stroll in the kingdom of Daventry. I hmm. let's see. Nope, it's not that way. That's the uh, <clears throat> that's the screen with the ogre in it. We need to go north. Ah. This is probably the long way. 
Oh, well, we're back to the hole with the dagger in it. We need to find that, uh, that door that we came out of. If I can find that door that we came out of after coming down from the loud and the clouds, then we can find our way to the clover. Oh, nope, not here. Wait, 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 wait. I think this is it. Yes, okay. Uh, I think it's this way, actually. Yeah, we'll just walk straight east. All right. Now at least King Graham can, or not King Graham, Sir Graham can swim. Aha. Here we go. I think this is the last thing. Clover is soft, yet you sense a strange strength in it. I've seen a lot of clover in my day, and it must truly be magical because I have never, uh, never seen a clover that's actually been soft. Maybe uh, the clover, maybe I just live in the wrong part of the world to have non-soft clover plants. Anyway, let us take inventory. Okay, we've got a clover, which is possibly the most important part of this. The, uh, well, the clover and the fiddle. Yeah, I have to have those two things. Um, and we have the cheese, right? Yes, we got the cheese. I think that's all we need. Clover, fiddle, cheese. Yes, that's all we need. Okay. Uh, hello, bird. Fun fact that I learned is if you wander up here uh, with the goat, the bird will uh, fly away. Like, even if you have everything you need to go to where the bird will take you. Come on. There we go. Uh, the bird will be scared of the goat. <laughs> Just like everything else. Uh, all enemies. The witch, the sorcerer. I may have already said that. All the enemies are afraid of the goat. Makes me wonder if this bird is a friendly bird. I wonder if it's supposed to be like uh, the eagles of is it Gua Guahir? I can't remember uh, where the eagles are from, from Lord of the Rings. But I wonder if that's what it's supposed to be an acknowledgement of that. <clears throat> Since we already have an invisible ring, uh, which is uh, uh, definitely not... Uh, uh, <laughs> I mentioned to the... Uh, where is it? To the one ring. Because this is a, uh, a gold ring with a tiger's eye. Okay. And we need the mushroom. Okay, now we are ready to visit the land of the little people. Okay, and we're getting very close to uh, the end of the game. We might very well, in fact, I think, yeah, we will. We will finish uh, all of King's Quest 1 in one episode, which uh, makes me very pleased because I, I wasn't entirely certain that I could remember everything. I mean, I, I played this game, gobs, oh, 
almost walked into the rat. Stop, stop. Okay, that auto walk feature, that gets you killed so much. Okay, so... Greedy eyes. Can I... Treasure. Oh, okay, so... Maybe this... Maybe the gold walnut or egg. Or even the diamonds. It just says treasure. So I think maybe any one of these three treasures can be given to the rat. But. Oh man. Okay. A uh, new save. Uh, rat. Oh crap. Yeah, I'm afraid of it. It's going to bite my head off. Oh, crap! <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> this game. Really? Oh. Oh, I haven't... I don't have it typed it out. That's right, because I restored. Give. Cheese to rat. Duh. Okay, got it. I, I swear it has to be pixel perfect. Uh, or at least you have three pixels uh, of a of a space to like give it to him it's like okay i'm here and i'm good uh and maybe if i'm three pixels forward i'm good but if i'm four pixels forward i get mauled to death but if i'm one pixel behind from where i am nope it's too far away <laughs> oh roberta williams you are a cruel cruel game designer or developer Oh, we better count our fingers. <laughs> All right, open this door. They reveal the four leaf clover. Cool. Um, can I talk to the little people? Talk lep leprechauns. <laughs> Probably would. Uh, honestly, as favored as I am by the king, I don't seem like a totally competent individual. Wow, that is loud. Uh, look, king? Oh, and by the way, it was the king of the leprechauns who, uh, according to the lore, stole the, sh the, the shield. Well, no, it's not stole. He deceived the king into giving him the shield by pretending to have a cure for his for the queen who was sick and dying, and it was some kind of a he was some kind of a ruse or hoax to to make it appear as if the queen was getting better. But of course, she actually didn't. She died, and then the the, the shield had already been given as payment to uh, the, the leprechauns. Uh, which, in I think in the manual he appeared as a dwarf. Uh, so how he uh, how he got to the uh, like how what his association is with the leprechauns, whatever. But anyway, um, here's where we have to play. No wait, we have to go back up here. Oh man, that is noisy. Okay, now do a little bit of river dancing. Yeah, get jiggy with it. Okay, see you later. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, see that it pops. R E, right? Yes, All right. Now I have a scepter too that I can rule with. And get my shield back. Well, my kingdom's shield back. Assuming it was actually ours to begin with. And I remember, uh, I remember getting here the very first time I got here. So I got here, 
and I got stuck. <laughs> uh, and and this is, uh, I think that this area, the Leprechaun Land, whatever, uh, Darby O'Gill's Stomping Grounds, I think is designed to get you stuck unless you have, or it is designed to be like the last part of the game and to get you stuck to troll you unless you have a very important item, the mushroom. And of course, we are going to shrink because Alice in Wonderland needs uh, a nod to it as well. And voila, we are back in the forest. And now we have all three items with a chest, the shield, and the mirror. Where's the mirror? Let's get a good look at the mirror. Ah, uh, yes, lovely. Okay, so now I think it's just a short trot away. If I can get through these rocks to the castle. And I don't know if it's truly intended to... Ooh, this is the, where the dwarf is. We want to... Because I don't think the dwarf cares if I have the shield or not. He'll steal my crap anyway. Now the ogre... I can deal with the ogre if he appears. Because the shield will, will protect me from the ogre. But anyway, uh, I don't know if there's an actual intended way of the game being completed. But I've always ended up doing the uh, the, le the leprechauns leprechaun land last. Alright, we have returned King Edward with all of the items that you requested. You're welcome. Now I have earned the right to kingship, which I'm not sure if that's is saying much to uh, inherit this kingdom where I, I question the competency of uh, Sir Graham. And what? And well, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so we have beaten King's Quest one, and uh, oh yes, the little particularity, uh, peculiarity, whatever is that? Either of those words. You get actually one fifty nine out of one fifty eight. Not sure where they program the extra point uh, because I think in just this version this uh, this re-release of 1987 can you get the 159 at 158 anyway the uh, king is dying suddenly just as he knew he would be oh that's quite dramatic well done sir Graham you have been a good and faithful servant. Your reward is well deserved. My kingdom is now worth yours. Yeah, what kind of a kingdom am I getting inherited? I mean, uh, we are weak and poor. And yeah, thank you for you know sending me on a quest to get a mirror that tells me the future and a shield that makes me basically invincible and a chest that never ends with gold. But how 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 exactly do you expect me to build a kingdom up with that seriously i don't know i don't know i i don't know anything about building a kingdom so apparently apparently sir graham had an idea because he was uh he became a good king apparently as you begin your reign as king in daventry all right hooray i'm king now Thank you for playing King's Quest from Ken and Roberta Williams. You're welcome, and thank you, Roberta Williams, for making an innovative and 
groundbreaking game that would change adventure gaming forever. It literally did. So, that's King's Quest 1. And... In our next adventure, King's Quest 2, Romancing the Throne, we will see about getting ourselves a, uh, getting ourselves a wife. Okay, I don't know if it does anything after this. I think it just plays the theme and then that's it. Yeah, and then you just, you can just stare at yourself. Relax and bask in the satisfaction of beating the game with the perfect score. So anyway, that is King's Quest 1, and my memories, recollections, and experiences of, of playing King's Quest 1. So until next time, so long for now.